Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live. We are ready to go. Ready to go. I can get this situated right. Let's see if that's better. Hello, One Dish. Welcome to the live. How are you doing today? Glad you are here. It says we have eight people watching. So the eight people who are watching, go ahead and leave a comment and say hi. Come on into the live. Don't be, don't be afraid. Now it says seven. I scared one away. Hi, Denise. How you doing? Hello, Bev. I've been in... When the ads, oh, okay, and that's probably where some of the other ones are, are at. Hi, Flora, welcome to the live. How are you doing today? Welcome, everybody. One Dish, Denise, Flora, so glad you're here today. So glad. You see that title? How do you feel when you think about God having a special purpose for your life? And each and every one of us have a special pur purpose. I'm going to wait to a few more. Hi, Marcia. Welcome to the live. How are you doing today? So glad you're here. Flora says, great. Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Not bad for an old lady, is it? Not bad. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, DH. Welcome. How you doing? DH says hello to everyone. Y'all come on in the live and share it out. Give me a thumbs up as you're coming in now. Come on in. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Plenty of seats. A lot of people can sit right here on this sofa with me. Floor. Okay. Denise is in the ads. Great. Hello, beautiful. I read that. DH. No, not old. Hey, Vicky, welcome to the live. Lord, honey, I'm old as dirt. <laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. Hey, Linda Singleton, good morning. And how are you? God is so amazing. And our minds cannot even comprehend what all he wants us to do. You better speak it, Linda. Speak it. Speak it. I receive it. You told the truth there. Our minds cannot, we can't even fathom or even put it in our thoughts. But we want what we want God to do is give us a sound. Sound, man, Lord. Sound, man. Sound. Floor, beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I receive it. I, you know, it is hard for me when someone gives me compliments. I don't know why it's so hard for me, but it is. I can give compliments out all day. It's all right as long as I'm saying it. But when somebody gives it to me, it's just, it's hard for me to receive it. And I'm trying to get better with that. Denise is here. Yay. She made it through the ads. <laughs> But we need the ads. Y'all know that. Any video y'all watch on YouTube, please watch their ads. Now, some of them are pretty, pretty long. I ain't asking nobody to sit for no 20 minutes, 50 minutes. I've seen them like that. No. But just watch a little bit. But an ordinary ad, yeah, please sit watch it from the start to the finish. That's how we make our little coins on YouTube. <laughs> And if you're able, please join our channel membership. We have channel membership here, and they start out at $1.99 a month. And if you decide next month you don't want to do it, you can cancel it. But please join, and we have a lot of different perks. It will tell you when you hit that join button right down there, that little join button next to analytics. So if you can, join our channel membership. 
I only sat through those ads for you, LOL. Thank you, Denise. Love, love, love. I got love. <laughs> I am so blessed. I am so blessed. Flora, we need God every minute. Yes, we do. And in these times that we're going through, all this stuff that's going on left and right, these shootings, and oh my Lord, yesterday one in a hospital. Now, churches and hospitals and schools should be one of our most safest places to be. And it's getting to where you are uncomfortable in those places. I know in my church on Sunday morning, all of our doors are locked after a certain time, but the front door coming in and out. But when you hear that door open, you turn around and look. I'm about to get crooks in my neck and turn around trying to see who's coming in. And we shouldn't be like that in the house of the Lord. We shouldn't have to be like that. But these times have gotten us to that, that place. Um, we have all this these cameras and security around our church. We used to didn't have that. Used to our church would stay open 24 7 the doors were unlocked you can come and go as you please not anymore not anymore flora said i read that denise yes you have love from all of us and god amen i am blessed and highly favored and know it now that i know and i thank god for that i know that beyond a shadow of a doubt what do you think about security what you mean, security around the church? It's... Now, I live in a little small town, and a little bit like everybody knows everybody. If you don't know them, that face, when you see them, you'll be thinking, that face looks familiar. And this part of the, uh, Tennessee is growing up now, and a lot of people have moved here from the north because the cost of living is much lower here than you know, where they came from. And the situation, the police in our area on Sunday, they ride by our churches uh, constantly, which is a blessing. They, um, our police, it's like our family in our area. Most of them, we knew them from little kids growing up, black and white and Hispanic. And majority of them, I, I say 90% of them, I am comfortable around. I feel safe when they're in the area. Let me tell you a story. I, I've told it before, but it was a while ago. I was doing, we were um, um, getting our prayer room together at church, and the deaconess was in charge of uh, decorating the prayer room and getting it all together. And I am the chairman of the deaconess board, so I had to be up there when a young man was painting. And I, when he got through painting, I had to come home. I had to come home for some reason. I had to come home quick, and I was late for whatever it was. And so I was driving fast. So I looked up and seen this police officer <laughs> behind me. And I'm going, he didn't turn on any lights or anything, but you know, he kept getting closer and closer to me. And I said, well, I wonder if he want me to pull over. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I kept driving and driving. And we passed by um, the plant, used to be Alcor Aluminum Company. We passed by there, and he was still following me. And I said, what is he wanting? And he finally turned his lights on when I was turning to come to my area. I still went on down the road about a mile before I pulled over. <laughs> and you know how now police officer, when they pull you over, they call in all kinds of uh, officers to, to back them up and all this and that. And when he pulled me, when I finally pulled over and he came to the car, he was laughing. He was laughing. He said, didn't I just see you back at the church? <laughs> well, when we were trying to get in the church, we set the security off, the alarm off, because we didn't go in fast enough when we put the code in. And the alarm went off, and the police came, and he was one of the officers that came. And I had to explain to him what had happened. 
And uh, several of them came, but he was one of them that I talked to. He said, now I seen you at the church, and now I, I had to pull you over now because you're speeding. <laughs> He didn't, he was so nice and gentle with me. And uh, he said, you were supposed to pull over way back there because I was right behind you. I said, well, you didn't turn on no lights. I didn't know what you were doing. I was wondering why you were so close up on me. <laughs> but he was really nice. He, was, he didn't call for any backup or anything. He handled it. He checked everything and went on his way. But if I was in another city at another time, I probably would have been nervous. I probably would have been nervous. But around here, I thank God right now, so far, I'm not nervous. I, they don't, when I see the police, they don't frighten me because most of them I know. I know. I work with a lot of them. One time or another, uh, back in the day, we had worked together. There I go again, knocking everything. Uh, Vicky says, my church has the security guards. Well, if it keep up, I wouldn't be surprised if mine doesn't because uh, my pastor don't play when it comes to stuff like that. We still, most of the churches in our area, we call them repass. I don't know what y'all call them. Like when uh, you have the funeral of someone, uh, a funeral in your church afterwards when the family go back to eat, we call it repass. But uh, he he hasn't allowed us to uh, open up our church where we can have repasses in the church yet. Um, Sunday? No, Sunday is the first Sunday. The second Sunday in June is our church anniversary. And we normally have a big dinner then, so I don't think we're having that then. DH, I'm actually doing extremely well. After my surgery, my doctor's appointment is tomorrow to see if I'll be able to go back to work. Please keep me in your prayers. It is extremely sad about the shooting. Yes, it is extremely sad. And DH, you are in my uh, prayer. Atomic, atomic, atomic. Carla, Carla, Carla's in the house. Carla's in the house. My atomic girl is in the house. I know you can't stay you at work. Tuesday, Atomic, I showed your basket, went through everything in it one by one on Tuesday's live. I talked about you, Carla. If anybody don't know, I went to New Orleans this weekend for a, um, a wedding ceremony of our cousin. And when I got there at the hotel, Atomic, whose name is Carla, had a beautiful gift basket waiting for me. It is beautiful. It was, it was loaded with all New Orleans treats. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. And that praline candy, girl, I tore right into it and tore it up. It was delicious. But I'm going to make the recipes you put in there, Carla. I'm going to do it all. And when I do, you'll know. I had to throw that in there right quick because I know you're at work and you got to get back. I love you, Carla. And thank you so much for greeting me in your city, in your state, in your town with so much love. And everybody that I came in contact with, Carla, there showed me nothing but love. I had such a good time and felt so welcome from people I did not even know. It was truly a blessing. I'm transferring to another store. Been here seven years, but can't work with this boss. I understand. I understand. Prayers always from Denise. Angela, how you doing, girl? Angela said, I missed the story in the A. <laughs> And you missed Tuesday when we talked, when I talked all about my New Orleans trip and the good time I had. Oh, it was unreal. I'll never forget this as long as I live. And we will be going back to New Orleans. We had such a good time. Everything was good except for the flights. All those flights being canceled. That ain't no joke. That ain't fun. It's not fun. Angela Critter. Oh, no, Atomic. I'm sorry. I hope it works out. I do, too. 
And I pray that her uh, new place of work, that they uh, will receive her better. Angela said, yes, I'm in. A time, love you too. Oh, Lord, love. Oh, if I could just hug you right now. Just hug you. And I pray that your mother-in-law is doing better and that y'all had a good time on your trip going see, to see your mother-in-law. But the young lady behind the counter, she was so excited when I got, she said, a young lady left you a gift basket this morning and I have it in the back and I put the sausage in the refrigerator. The sausage was cold. She kept it in there. They did everything good. Bye, Tomek. I love you, baby girl. Angela, I can't believe you came back before. Angela, I can't believe it. <laughs> Angela, I am just beginning to feel like myself today. Old people don't need to be traveling like that. Oh, gosh. You poor thing, Angela. That's so sweet. Linda, I used to go to church a lot by myself and do some work. Here lately, you cannot go down there at all till someone uh, stops and tries to come in. People not from this area are sad, but it is not safe anymore. You're right. You're right, Linda. Hey, Spikey. Hey, Miss Beverly. Congrats on the 1K, on the 13K. Thank you. And you know, when I came on, when I was coming on the live, I checked my subscribers to see where I was at. And I was at 13,152. Yesterday, I was blessed with 100 subscribers yesterday. And so far today, I have been blessed with 52 subscribers. The Lord has been blessing me for the last few weeks with at least 100 subscribers a day. Will you look at God? Will you look at what God can do? Because what's for you and you and you is for you. And can't nobody else steal it. Can't nobody else act like it. Can't nobody else be who you are and your blessings. That is, it is, Linda, I remember the times we're going to church, wouldn't think about nothing, all the doors unlocked. I mean, we'll go in there and just go to the altar and pray or just sit in the pew and just be quiet and have moments alone with you and the Lord. Now, you got to be turning, turning that head around to see who goes. And when you hear something, I think I heard something upstairs. I think I heard something at the back door. Never. Stuff like, even then when we heard it, when we heard noises in the church, we didn't pay it no attention. Wasn't any fear, a doubt, or worrying about somebody going to break in and do something. It just didn't. It was church. Church was sacred. I remember at church, now people are smoking everywhere. When I, when I was younger, you did not even smoke on the church ground. People who had to smoke a cigarette, they would step out in the highway. Or they would go over on the other side where the parking lot was. But they never smoked on the church ground. Now, they, they just do whatever they want. Smoking, fine. One Sunday before we went into church, we, were, we had got there, gotten to church. And this was probably... About eight months ago, we got in the church a little bit earlier. The night before, some people in the in the area had had a little block party or something. Beer cans and bottles and alcohol bottles were all in the parking lot of the church. It was my pastor, my husband, my brother, and my grandson, and one of the ministers in the church. We out there before church started cleaning up the parking lot where they had been partying up and down the street and threw their empty bottles and cans in the church parking lot. When I was younger, it was like, if I mean, you couldn't even, it was like your hand was something to be cut off if you did something like that. You, it just didn't even enter your mind to throw a beer bottle or a beer can onto the church property, let alone smoke a cigarette and throw that butt down? Oh, no. You just didn't do that. 
You didn't do it. But now they don't care. They just don't care. Spike, you deserve you deserve it. That food you be cooking looks amazing. Thank you, Spikey. I had the most awesome weekend of my life. The wedding was beautiful. Everything was beautiful. The food everywhere. And, and everybody was just so nice and cordial. In New Orleans, I will be back. Smoking at church seems disrespectful. It is disrespectful. It is. Angela, I remember, well, it was 30 years ago. It was some older ladies in the church, you know, the church mothers, and they were the older deaconess. I never even thought about them smoking. Never entered my mind of them smoking. And I was working in the kitchen. We were having a, a, um, a dinner at the church that day. And it was two of the older sisters. Never knew these, never smelled smoke on them. Never even entered my mind that they smoked. And they went round the back and went on the side. Well, went up off the church property. They were off the church property. And I seen them with those, um, is it Lucky Lucky Stripes? Lucky Stripes cigarettes. Some old cigarettes that had no filter. And I thought my eyes was going to pop out of my head when I said, I said, they smoke? And I, they took a couple of hits and came back in and, and put it and, and put and put it in their purse. They didn't throw it on the ground or nothing like that. Nowhere near it. They put it in their purse. And then they came on in. But I never would have thought they smoked. Linda. Right, I had a guy come down uh, one day, and he said he wanted to come and do a revival for us. I didn't have a good feeling, and later he said he had just got out of prison. We locked door. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And that don't mean that he is bad because he just got out of prison, and, he, and I know he loved the Lord, but you got to use your common sense. I mean, flags go up when somebody say, I just got out of prison and I want to do a service. And when a lot of them, when they just get out of prison, they high. They hype on the Lord, you know, especially when they've been saved in prison. Because we used to have a prison ministry at church and Brushy Mountain Prison. We would go there once a month, Brushy Mountain Prison. And on Thanksgiving and Christmas, we always took uh, dinner to the prisoners Lord, they treated you like kings and queens. They were the sweetest thing. And then somebody um, would tell you, uh, you were well, you talking to so-and-so? You be careful because he, he done kill so many people. And I go, oh, my. But to be in there and be, you never would have known it. You, but they had those guards with them. Guards were all around, too. But it was more lenient. They were more lenient with it, with the churches coming in then. And I... It, I was never afraid. I didn't even worry. And I was in a maximum security prison. I never, I wasn't even worried about it. I am more fearful of the world now than going in them prisons, doing prison ministry. And that's awful. That's a shame. Hey, Tracy Boot. Hi, Miss Beverly. Angela, hi, Tracy. Spikey. Well, that's why security now, Linda, at church. Yeah. That's security at churches. Common sense, right, Miss Beverly? Yes, it's in the Bible. It is, Angela. Our church is downtown. We have our, our doors locked now, too. Mm-hmm. You got to. You got to have those doors locked for the protection of everybody. And, that, and that's sad. Let's get... We're going to get into the Word. And see, today's lesson is purpose. That's what it's about. Purpose. That's what we're going to talk about today is purpose. I have a few, few scriptures and then I'll read the prayer that they have written here and then we'll go through the question. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. That is Jeremiah 29 and 11. We know that in all things God worked for the good of those who love him, 
We have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8 and 28. My child, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to what I say. Don't ever forget my words. Keep them always in your mind. And that's Proverbs 4, 20 through 21. Let me read that again. My child, pay attention to my words. Now, there's God telling you, my child, all of you, pay attention to my words. God said, pay attention to his words. Listen, listen closely to what I have to say. Don't ever forget my words. Keep them always in your mind. Keep them always here. Lord, give me a sound mind. A sound mind. That's what we all need to pray for and want. A sound, sound mind. Now the prayer. Before I was even conceived, you thought of me. Lord of all creation, you spent time considering who I would be and who I would be and what purpose I'll fulfill in your kingdom. I wondered how I can ever live to the version of me that you designed. I'm weak, flawed as a human. But it doesn't depend on me, does it? My strength is from you. My gifts, talents, passions, and purpose are all from you. Today, I offer you my faith that if you willed it, how mercy, Lord, if God willed it, I can fulfill it. Did y'all hear them powerful words? That if God willed it, I can fulfill it. Keep saying it with me. That if God willed it, I can fulfill it. That's powerful. That if God willed it, I can fulfill it. Mm, mm, mm. And the question and the title of today's Alive, how do you feel when you think about God having a special purpose for your life? And God has a special purpose for all of our life. And what God has for you and you and you and myself is for us. No one else can steal it. No one. What is for us? What God has for us is for us. Let me see what you said. Hey, Marlene, welcome. Welcome. And she's saying welcome all and telling everybody to like and share. That's She's a mod. She's on her point. Uh, Marlene, I believe in God's purpose for me. I didn't claim it before. Vernell, hey, Marlene, Marlene. If God willed it, I can fulfill it. Thank you. Isn't that powerful, Marlene? If God willed it, I can fulfill it. I mean, that's something to think about. If God willed it, I can fulfill it. No one can steal, stop, a block. Amen. They may try, but they can't be you. They can't do what God has for you. They can imitate you. They can do that all day. But what God has for you is for you. And he puts a special anointing on what he has for you. And that person over there who's trying to steal it and rob it, it never comes forth like it will with what God has for Angela, what God has for Marlene, what God has for Linda, what God has for Carla. What we try or what others may try to steal from you, to imitate you, will not come forth right. It will not. But when it happens, we sit back, myself, myself, we be angry, doubtful, want to seek revenge, 
want to get that person, want to expose that person, want to show that person, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, all of that. But what God has showed me Just be still. Be quiet. This is my fight. It's not yours. Vengeance is mine. And I will repay. What that person tried to do to my child. This is my child. Who I have called to do my purpose. And you trying to rob my child? That I have called to do this special gift? Mm -mm. You may not see it now. You may not see it tomorrow. You may not see it a year from now. It may be 10, 20. But when you least expect, you going to pay for what you did to God's anointed. And we are all God's anointed. It's not just for ministers. When I grew up and taught, when we know better, we do better. When I was taught that scripture to not touch God's anointed, I would almost tremble because I thought you can't think nothing bad about a minister. You can't say nothing bad about a minister because if you do, God going to get you for that because he's God anointed. Well, we're God's anointed. God put his anointing on all of his children, not just ministers. God speaks to all of us, not just ministers. I used to believe that the only way I know what God wanted for me or had to say to me, my pastor had to tell me. You know, someone in leadership in the church had to tell me, God speaks directly to me. I don't, when Jesus went to the cross, the middleman was cut out. That's why we got to read the word and know it for ourselves and not believe in just because that person stands in the pulpit that they know everything, that they're blessed with everything. They're learning just like we are. They're traveling this road just like we are. That's why you need to have your word on your phone, your Bible. And as they read it, speak it, and teach it, you be following them. Because they flawed. They mess up. They don't do it intentionally, but they do. I've heard ministers stand up there teaching. And what? Mm -mm, that ain't right. Mm -mm, that ain't what my word said. They must have a different Bible from me. Because that's not what my word's saying. That's not what my word's teaching me. That's why you got to be careful. You can fall for anything and all of it. What did God say when you come before him? Everybody ain't going. You want to say, even though you've been down here, you're going to be saying, Lord, I done this for you. I done that for you. I was over there feeding the, uh, the homeless. I was, you know, taking them back and forth, the senior citizen. Depart from me. I do not know you. That's something to think about. Let God be God and take care of it. Amen. Amen. Marlene, when God has a purpose for you, it will be blessed when you believe and act on the vision. Amen, Marlene. Marlene, everyone is imperfect. It's only one perfect one, and that is Jesus Christ. We're striving. We're striving to be perfect. But we're not going to be perfect until our spirit is with God. Because 99 and a half won't do. You got to be a complete 100. And that 100 comes from Jesus Christ. He's the only perfect one. Everyone, that's right. Everyone, we sin every day of our life. And you know what? I am, where well, it was, it probably was 40 years ago. It was this man, and he was a deacon in the church. He, that's why I can't, you got to be careful. You got to read the word for yourself and know the word. That man stood and said, I don't sin. I go, 
I don't sin. Since, uh, you know, he, that person got saved because God has saved them. And he was an older man back then. He was like in his 70s probably. And he actually believed that he didn't sin. And we all sin every day of our life. He sinned when he told that lie. That was a sin. And it's no big sin, no little sin. Uh, because this person over here may commit adultery. And that person over there may have stole something. And that person over there may have killed someone. But you know what? Sin is sin. It ain't no big sin. It ain't no little sin. Each one is the same size. Sin is sin. And we need to get that. That's why we need a what? Sound. Sound mind. And stop prejudging people. Because in your mind, you thinking because of what they do is so distasteful distasteful to you or is something that you can't do or that person over here you know uh they're homosexuals we're not supposed to 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 to, to uh uh mingle or be around the homosexual the devil is a liar what did jesus what was the last commandment what did he tell us to do he didn't tell us to judge that person because of their sexual preference and you can't talk to them, you can't look at them, and you can't what? L-O-V-E. Love them. You love L-O-V-E. Quit judging people and start loving people. None of us are perfect. None of us. See what y'all are saying. Dirt Diggy UK. Hey, it's been a while. Yes. Dirt Diggers UK. How you doing? <laughs> Lord as of. It made me think about it. What's her name? Wendy Wing. How you doing? How she do it? How you doing? I can't do it like she did. But anyway, that made me think of that. Welcome to welcome to the live. Welcome. Okay, Lola going home, can't say it was me. Okay, my sister-in-law had to go to the emergency room this morning. They thought she was having a heart attack, and her husband just ticked and let us know that she was getting ready to go home from the emergency room, which is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, won't God do it? Won't God do it? He had to call the ambulance because uh, she's a sickly person, and normally when she gets sick, Kenny just takes her to the emergency room himself, but because he used to work in the hospital and whatever was going on with her this morning that he knew that he shouldn't be transporting her. So he called the ambulance. Marlene. Hey, Sister Patricia, Marlene, love people. Amen. Linda Sink, we are we are only traveling through this old world. We don't have to let it drag us down. He has come to give us life and more abundantly. He wants us happy and successful here and to be a witness. Yes, I'm going to go. What that song? I'm going to be a witness for you. That's what we're supposed to do. Because the only Bible so, that some people see is us walking, talking, living our life. That's why I have problems. You know, I'm not trying to judge. But Lord said, by your fruits, by their fruits. Now, that's what he said. By their fruits, you should know them. I have issues. I'm old school. I'm old school. But to me, that's cursing and blessings coming out your mouth at the same time. You can't be cursing. And yeah, I, I say bad words too. I've said bad words. I ain't perfect. I ain't perfect. But when I talk about my Lord, when I'm witnessing and telling others of the goodness of God, I'm not going to be cursing in one breath and telling you how to live in the next. I can't do it. That's cursing and blessing coming out of your mouth at the same time. That's a biggie to me. I cannot... Even on YouTube, when I be going to uh, 
different videos and and I hear most motivational a lot of motivational speakers are are got that bad they're trying to uplift you and and and, and move you on to the ne next level I understand I see what they're saying and they doing good with what they're saying but you can you can do even better just speaking the truth and you don't have to cuss you don't have to cuss to get God's word across I d that's just me I don't see it it bothers me and uh I'll just go on to the next video. I'm not listening to that. I'm not, I mean, yes, I want to be motivated. I want to be uplifted. I want to get that uh, something and push me and want me to go. I love to hear them speak. I like that. But you don't have to cuss me. I'm sorry. You don't have to cuss me to get it across. Maybe some people you do, but I'm not that one, okay? If you want, I want to be motivated but I want to be motivated with words that have like honey coming out that are sweet. And you don't have to scream at me. <laughs> I don't know why they do all that screaming, but they do. Now, when the anointing is on you and God is leading you, yeah, you get excited. Your voice get high. Yeah, you go to another level. That I understand because I can feel the anointing then. I can feel the anointing. You can't fool me on that one. When you're just screaming and hollering and telling stuff just to be doing it, right, that's screaming and hollering. And then you're going to cuss. And then you're going to tell me what God said. No. No. Can't receive it. Because I'm, I'm, I want you to do this. I want you to go. Now, Mods, y'all keep up with what people are saying saying in the live, you know, keep it going and flowing. And I appreciate what you're saying, but I got to say what's in my heart right now and, 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 and get it out. Now, when God is speaking, even when Moses was upset and he broke those, um, um, the tablets, did he cuss? Did he have to say bad words to get it across? And he was mad at the people. He was angry. He was upset with him. And when God spoke to him, when he spoke to the old prophets, prophets and told them what they need, do you recall God cussing? Do you recall God saying bad words to get what he had to say across? Maybe my Bible has something different, but I don't have that in my Bible. Does yours? So why are we doing all that? Why are you misleading? I mean, lead. We're leaders. We're leaders. We're content creators. People expect certain things from, and, and there are certain um, channels that that's what they do, and that's what they go to hear, you know. And some people are just straight out dog cussers, and I know that. Every other word coming out of their mouth is a cuss word. I, I know people like that. I mean, in my presence, I don't want to hear it. And most of them that who are around me and do that and know me don't do it in my presence. It's not that I think I'm better or on a different level. It's just they do it out of respect. They do it out of respect because they know how I flow and where I go. And who I serve most of all. And I don't play with God like that. I don't play with God like that. You're pulling yourself down. You're going down. You ain't going up. You're going down when you do that. You're going down. That's why you need to study to show yourself approved. You need to get in that word and get the word in you. You need to eat it. To taste it. And see that it is good. You need to get that word inside of you. And what I've been saying, that sound mind. Get that sound mind. And when you get that sound mind, those words ain't going to be coming out of you. You can speak and tell people whatever you have to speak. But you can do it with what? Words that come out like honey and a sound mind. Think on those things. Think on them. Think on them. Like Maya Angelou used to do, you know, it was a young lady and she met Maya Angelou. And when she first met her, 
she wanted to call her um, Maya, call her by her first name. She corrected her right quick. She said to you, I am Mrs. Angelou. She was older. This is a younger person. You don't know me like that. You can't call me by my first name. When I was younger, I didn't know older people had first name for the longest because it was always Mr., Mrs., Miss. I bet not even thought to say somebody, uh, hey, Barbara, hey, Marlene, hey, Angela. I better not. My face would have been twisted. And I'd be on a wall somewhere trying to find my lips. You just didn't do that. You did. You Grown people, you gave them respect. You gave them their respect. It was Mr., Mrs., or Miss. You did not call them by their first name. When I found out my neighbor's mother's name, it blew my mind. Barbara met the grandmother lived with them back then you know we all kept up we always kept granny and and, and papa all stayed with the family and and the grandmother name was miss now let's say miss susie because she had everybody calling her miss susie or mama susie we could say mama susie but for me to walk up and say hey susie how you doing <laughs> She would get me, then send me home to Alan Carr, and he would get me, okay? Susie, how you do? Lord, even now, I'm about choked saying it. That was Miss Susie. Okay, turn over, check was another. Second Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself. That's right. You got to study. You got to get in that word and the word in you. And before you read that word, ask God to bless you, to give you spiritual revelation, that you will be spiritual minded. Don't read it carnal minded. Don't read it like I'm talking to you now. Carnal minded, worldly minded, with everything of the world going through this head at that time. You know, you're just picking up the Bible and just reading up. Uh, for I know, I know, for I know the plans that I have for you. You know, like you're reading a book, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Don't even know what it means. I just read. Did you read your Bible? Yeah, I read my Bible this morning. I read the whole uh, a chapter of uh, Jeremiah. The, what, what chapter is it? The 29th chapter of Jeremiah. I read the whole thing this morning. Well, what did it say? Uh, you know what? I forgot. What did it say? I forgot. But if you read it spiritual minded, you, you may not recall every verse, but somewhere in there, something is going to stick that was for you. But if you read in it carnal minded, mm-mm. It ain't going to stick. It ain't going to stick. You got to be spiritual minded. Pray before you read the word that God will give you revelation and understanding of his word. Everything that you read in God's word ain't going to jump out at you at the, at the same time. It ain't going to hit you, you know. I read, I've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation so many times, I can't even count. But when I go through different chapters... It may be one verse that God will reveal to me what that verse means. Sometimes it's not any. Some I've read for years and years, and all at once God opens it up, and it's like a big light goes on, and he reveals to me what that verse is really saying. But most of the time, that is what I need in my life at that, that time, when God gives me that understanding and that revelation. I know a minister, he used to be my pastor. He had a mega church. He didn't graduate from high school. But this man had over 2,500 uh, people in his church. He had a mega church. He came from a drug dealer. I mean a drug dealer. 
to uh, the minister, the pastor of this church. When God saved him, he flushed $20,000 of marijuana down the commode that night flushed it down. He was a big drug de dealer, had all kinds of nightclubs in Knoxville, was selling drugs, but God delivered him. And when God delivered him, he stayed in his bedroom for over a month, did not, did not come out, was praying and in God's word. His mama was bringing him food back and forth. Because he was in, he was eating it. He was eating it. He was eating that word of God. And when God brought him out, he was a new man. He was a new creature in Christ. He was a new creature. He started um, the church in the home, at the dining room table, with a few people, and ended up with over 2,500 members of that church. This man, when they had the Million Man March, the city of Knoxville, Tennessee, sent him there to represent. This man had not gotten his high school diploma. And God told him what he has to do. I want you to do it from the revelation of me. From the revelation of God, you go and the God showed him what he was going to do and everything you then he didn't have this mega church, but God revealed to him the plans that were that he had for him and what the plans that he had for him. He was going to do it all from revelations from God. And he did it and he did it. He did it all from revelations of God. He said, you can't go to no college. What I want you to do from revelations from me. And when he built this first, the, the church, they said, no bank will give you no money. No bank will give you the money. He went to several banks. But then when he went to the bank of God, God told him to go to such and such bank. And in his mind, is thinking in his mind, told him, they ain't going to give me no money because that's one of the bigger banks in Knoxville. They ain't going to give me no money. I'm coming from the hood. When he walked, God prepared him and told him what to say and what he needed to do. When he walked in that bank, when he walked out, he had a loan for 100%. 100%. Not 50, not 60 but 100% to build that church. Look at God. Look at God. What God has for you is for you. Linda says, so true. You can see things in the world that you may have read. Many yes, Lord. Miss Beverly, you can do Bible. I've, people, you know what? I have not really thought because when I speak, when I speak like this, when I open my mouth, I'm just seeing what God puts in me at that time. That's what I'm saying. You know, after this live, I probably can even tell you what I said if I don't, if I haven't listened to the live. And I don't like to listen afterwards. I don't like to listen to myself. I don't like to go, you know, to, what is it? Critique. Critique myself. I, I don't like to do that. So I just let it go. And in the moment in the time when God's anointing is on me, I just speak and let it flow what God has for me to say. I don't want to be in check with it or anything. And it really, it, I it, it, it has been drifting in my mind about Bible study. It really has. It has. But we'll see what God, y'all be praying about it. We'll see what God has for me. We'll see. Because what God has for me is for me. But you are teaching. Thank you, Tracy Boo. And you know what? I thought I was just talking. <laughs> I really did. I, I'm being honest. I thought I was just talking. And see what I'm saying? Were you all motivated? Did you all receive anything? And if you receive something 
and you were motivated, please put a one in the chat. Let me see. Put a one in the chat. If anybody received anything or was motivated from what God just dropped into me to drop into you, put a one in the chat and let me know. Angela, we have Bible study here every other Tuesday night before COVID. I mean, COVID. Now we have Zoom. That's right. Now we have Zoom. Trey, thank you. That's one of them. Yeah, put the one in here. Let me know that you, that you received something. Vicky one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Linda says, I was reading in Exodus and I got so tickled and laughing out loud. Like when Moses threw down his rod and turned it into the snake. Yes. It says Moses flew. Flew. LOL. I would have been right behind and brought me too. When I seen that snake, I'm going to say, holla at you. But that was the power of God. Woo! Yes, Lord. Uh, Angela, hi there, Vicky. Uh, Edwards, how you doing? I can't pronounce your first name because I know it's that Amika Edwards. But welcome to the live. Thank you for coming in. Um, Angela Critters, Linda, yeah. I love y'all. I really do. My family here... It's such a, my masterpiece, but you're God's masterpiece. But God allowed me to share you. So you are my masterpieces temporarily, but you God's main masterpiece because you're made in his image. And I, that's what I love. You know, I love to hear that. You are God's masterpiece. The volume behind those words because you're made in the image of God. That just shows you that people in the Bible were human. Just like us, we're humans. Yeah. Like when Jesus was, was uh, asleep on the ship and they were trying to wake him up because, you know, the, 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 the waves was coming in and they were getting scary and nervous. And they woke up Jesus because they wanted the master to be up with them and to see this and, and quieten that storm. And all, all Jesus had to say was, oh, I'm getting cold chill. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Mm, mm, mm. The Bibles were humans just like us, uh, even fears we have. But they let God move in their life. They sure did. Vernell said, Miss Beverly, have a good day. You too, Vernell. Thank you so much for coming by. Marlene. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, Bernal, Miss Beverly, did you know Moses was adopted? Oh, yes. I knew that they put him in, in, in the basket, went down there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know that story. I know that story. And I know who Moses married to. <laughs> I know who Moses, he married that Ethiopian woman. And that Ethiopian woman looked like me. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, she did. Um, Bernal said, welcome all the new people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's another story. I don't want to get into that right now because I, I could have went that way with it too. But no, nah, Lord, I ain't feeling that in my spirit right now. But yeah, they were people of color, of color. Angela, there you go, Angela. Woo, look at my girl. Look at my girl. See that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Zephora. Zephora. Yes. Zephora. Oh, I love this. I love this. Um, Marlene said, Moses love a chocolate. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Chocolate like this. Chocolate like this. <laughs> And he led them. He led them. He led them. 
Yes, he did. Linda said, I would have woke, up, woke him up too because I know Jesus was going to be okay. But I would have woke him up too, Ella. I would have too because I can't swim. I don't know how to swim. And to be on that water and all them waves and that storm coming. Oh, yes, I've been flying. Master, master, please get up, master. Everything will be all right if you're sitting up with us, master. Master, please get up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And they had him. They had God, Jesus right there. The son of man, everything was right there. All that power, all that power right there on that boat. Mm, mm, mm. Chocolate like this. Yes, chocolate like this. Ah, yes. Oh, Lord. We are a mess. We, but it's the truth. It's the word. It is the truth. It is what it is. Uh, Linda said, supposed to have, have said Jesus was going to be uh, okay even if he was asleep. Yeah. Everything because he was there. They would have they would have made it right through it. It might have been a little rough. It would have been rough, but they would have made it through because the master, the master was there. What is that? Something flying. I gotta clean my hand. The master was already there. Mm-mm-mm. Praise God. Yeah. When you read some of those old stories and you, uh, then the Old Testament, you know what that is. It's history. It's stories. It's, it's to show us. It's to show us what was, what could be. And it's nothing new under the sun. Not nothing, even in those days and time. But when Jesus went to that rugged cross, see, they, they had to go to the priests. And the priests, you know, when he went into the tabernacle, he had to have that rope on him because, you know, they had to pull him back. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They had to pull him out of that tip. He... Lord, that's, that's, that's a lot of teaching right there. That's a lot of teaching right there. See, they had the middleman. We don't have a middleman now. When Jesus went to the cross, he took all our sins there. And that's what... It was split right down. Mm, mm, mm. Vicky, is it true the whole Bible is a lesson for everyone? It, it is the whole Bible. The whole Bible is a lesson for everyone. It is. And I love talking about God's word. I have y'all here all day. <laughs> because one thing leads to another and leads to another. But you know what? Your assignment is to read Psalms 91. And when you read it, put yourself in it. Victory today is mine. Psalms 91. That is my favorite um, passage in the Bible or chapter in the Bible, however you want to call it. If anybody asks you what Beverly Black's favorite uh, chapter in the Bible is, it is Psalms 91. I love them all. I love the word of God, but it is something about Psalms 91. And I know because when I was going through difficult times, when I thought I couldn't make it, when I thought I wasn't worthy, when I thought that there was no way out, Psalms 91 brought me out. And I put myself, I called my own name in those verses. I put myself there. I lived and I would read them three, all, the whole chapter, I would read three times straight. Every one of them, three times straight, the whole chapter. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. That was my routine. And then I would pray. I would read it three times. It would, and even to this day, when, when I read that chapter, Psalms 91, and I read it one time, I don't feel right. I feel uncomfortable. I'm like, well, I need to read this two more times. And I have to, because 
I have done it so long. I always read Psalm 91 three times. But that's just Beverly. That's just Beverly. That's that's what God put in me that brought me through. God, what well, you know, I don't know what God may put in you that brings you through. I'm just sharing how he blessed me and want you to read it. <laughs> D.H. says, yes, amen, the word of God does not come back void. No. So even if you read it today, then you read it again next week, something new will come out of it based upon what we're going through. God is so good. Amen, 100%. And you spoke truth, D.H. That is it. That is, that's what I'm saying. You can read a scripture. You can read a scripture for 100 times. And then that 101 time you read it, it just bursts. It just opens up. It's just, it, be, it becomes real. It becomes life to you. You can see it. You can taste it. You can walk into it because you need it at that point of time in your life. And God gave you the revelation and the understanding and he revealed it to you. He brought that truth out and he showed you, I am the truth. I am the light. I am the way. And God is not a man that he should lie. He doesn't lie about anything. He doesn't go back on his word. What he said, he will do it. He didn't tell you what time he going to do it now. He didn't tell you what time he going to do it. Like the lesson he taught us coming back from New Orleans. When we, we got to the airport at, um, what, it was about one o'clock or going, it was somewhere like that. Anyway, the two o'clock flight was leaving New Orleans, going to Atlanta. It was overbooked. The five o'clock flight leaving from New Orleans going to Atlanta, overbooked. Jimmy goes in the bathroom and start praying. I'm praying where I'm sitting out there uh, in my seat because the next flight that left was going on eight o'clock was the last flight, last flight of the night leaving from New Orleans going to Atlanta. And if we didn't get that flight, we would have been in New Orleans all night long. The last flight leaving from New Orleans to at, going to Atlanta, the young man behind the desk told Jimmy that the flight was full. It was full. This one was full also. Jimmy goes on his phone and getting ready because we're flying standby. He retired from Delta, so we flying standby. He worked for Delta for 36 years. He was a ticket agent. So he's going on his phone looking. He said, well, I, I, he said, I think I'm going to just buy us a ticket from here to Atlanta one way for two people. $777. $777. He went and talked to that young man, and he almost hit to buy it. And then he came back to the seat. When he came back to the seat, he couldn't buy it. It was like it disappeared. He tried every different kind of way to get them tickets. He couldn't get them. He couldn't get them to buy. He said, well, I guess somebody done bought them tickets that quick. They gone. I can't buy them. They loading on the plane. We just knew we were going to be in. He said, well, you want to go get a room somewhere or what? Next thing you know, black, too. Look at God. And in my mind, in the sound mind, it comes, trust me. Trust me. You prayed. Trust me. Black, too. We Going down, Jimmy said, I feel like doing the holy dance when we're going down that ramp to get on that plane. We made it to Atlanta, where I see all the flights was messed up. So the, all the flights in Atlanta was messed up. They trying to get people on and people running. When we got out, even the, the um, pilot said, if you don't have to have a connection in Atlanta, the people who need to get off and have a connection, please let them get off first because people are going to be running. They got to get to their next destination. We got off running because that flight leaving from Atlanta that night when we got there, it was going on 11 o'clock was the last flight of the night. And if we didn't get that flight, we've been in Atlanta all night. We get to running. We made it over. Get there to the desk. Our name is not even on the list. Jimmy goes up there and put our name on the list. Look like we're going to be stuck in Atlanta tonight. But God, but God, when he when they got our name on, she got our name on the list. Jimmy's getting ready to turn around and come and sit down. 
black too. Black too. We got on that plane. We were home by 12 o'clock that night. Look at God. Went through that all day long, but you got to trust him. You got to believe him, even when it look dark, like you can't, don't have a way and you don't have no way out. And nothing is going to come and help you because you at the very end. You at the point where you can't get out and there's no way out. But it's nobody but God. That's all you got to depend on is God. He, he came in, he showed up, and he showed out. He showed up. And he showed out. Going to New Orleans was the same story. We had a hard time getting on. But when we got on from Atlanta to New Orleans, we had one first class seat and one right behind. And my husband said, you sit in the first class seat. But God, don't tell me what God can't do. All you got to do is trust him, believe him. And trust is not easy. That word comes out easy, but trust is not easy. It's hard. It is hard. It is hard to do. But we got to trust him. We got to trust and believe. When you're, up against, when you're up against the wall and you feel like there's no way out and you, you're going to lose it all, you're going to lose your house, you're getting ready to get evicted, you're getting ready to come take your car, they're getting ready to cut the lights out. When you're at that point, that's when God steps in. But God, whoo, Jesus, I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, DH said, you got me over here clapping, Sister Beverly, yes, and hallelujah. I am so happy I got to get on here today abundantly blessed, but God, <laughs> but God, won't he do it? Won't he do it? He steps in at the last moment. And not all the time is at the last moment. Sometimes he gets us at the beginning. But most of the time, it's at that last moment when you feel like you ain't got no other help. All your help done went away. Nobody cares. Nobody's there for you. God steps in. But God, keep your trust in God. When you feel like you're about to lose everything, you just holler out to him. You start praying because he said in this word to pray about everything and all things, the good and the bad, start praying. Always pray. Always pray. Always seek his face and his guidance. Even when you don't understand, even when you don't completely believe you hear me? When you don't completely believe, pray. Ask him to change your heart. And what else? What else we've been talking about? Sound mind. Sound mind. The Lord gave me this scripture uh, one time, Nathan 1 and 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. He knows my name. See that? I be thinking I can get off here and y'all keep opening up more. <laughs> he knows our name. He knows the hairs on our head. Even this hair that I got these little thin hairs on here, honey. He knows how many I got. He knows. He knows. He knows my heart. He knows the good, the bad, the ugly. He knows me. He, he knew me before he even made me. Who else knows me like that? Nobody but God. Nobody. He knew me before I was born. He knew you. He knew you. He knew what you was going to do and what you weren't going to do. He knew how he could trust you and how he couldn't trust you. He knew. Okay. Vicky said, you must, what, girl, we, uh, we, I uh, can't even put it into words. When we got, when we got off that plane in Knoxville and we were home, I was just look at God. Just look at God. Both flights, y'all hear that thunder? Both flights. He waited to the last flight to put us on. Who you trust, Beverly? Who you trust, Jimmy? I trust God. 
Okay, I'm going to speak, decree, and declare over your life and my life because it's getting ready to storm. And I don't want the power to go out. And we be knocked off. Trust God. <laughs> I am courageous. I am unstoppable. I am victorious. I am love. I am blessed. I am gifted. I am anointed. I am successful. I am healed. I am healthy. I am beautiful. I am whole. I am confident. I am forgiven. I am grateful. I am generous. I am strong. I am favored. I am able. I am powerful. I am fruitful. I am God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece because our God does not make any junk. In Genesis, the first chapter, it says we are all made in the image of God. Go look in that mirror. Like I always say, go look in that mirror if you want to see what God looks like. He looks like you and you and you and you. And that is power. That is power. And we're all made in his image because we are his masterpiece. I love you, but God loves you more. Why? Because you are his masterpiece. Be blessed. Have a blessed weekend. And don't take that word lightly when I say be blessed. Because that's the honor that anybody tells you when someone tells you, be blessed. You be blessed. Be blessed and highly favored. Have a blessed and prosperous weekend. And I love my mods for blessing me today and helping me and everyone who came into this live. And I pray that you are all blessed and with a sound mind. Bye-bye, everyone.